Hey guys, welcome back to Better Biomed. I'm in the field again today, fixing things. My actual passion. And um, I found a device that I haven't seen before, but it's got some interesting features. And I wanna share those with you. And um, maybe let's go over the problem and why I'm here today anyway. All right, let's do it. So, this is a cardiac stress test, but it's made by Midmark, which I'm actually unfamiliar with because it looks very similar to the GE cardiac stress testers. It's got a couple things going on down there that is not similar to GE. Um, so what it looks like is they built this guy out of parts. And instead of like designing a control board formally for it, I think they, they um, bought some extra parts, which is good for us because that means that we can get extra parts to repair it. But this is a well-built treadmill. And so the original problem is, is that when they have heavier patients on it, it would throw an error. It wouldn't tell you what the error code is. And then um, it would stop, it would lower all the way down. And um, you know, the machine would just quit its cycle. So with cardiac stress testers, it immediately makes me wonder about a couple different things. So first off, uh, one of the things that I'm worried about is um, the ECG and the heart rate of the patient because that's how these devices work. If they believe that they have reached a heart rate, a maximum heart rate, then it will uh, ease down, it will lower its elevation, and that way there it takes it easier on the patient's heart. Well, she said no, the, the patient's heart rate was fine. In fact, they couldn't get the patient up to the proper heart rate. So I said, okay, what about ECG? Uh, did you have any artifact? Because again, um, skin prep is a huge problem with all ECGs across the board. And that would tell me if there's a lot of artifact that it might say, hey, I can't get an ECG trace and cancel the test. In all cases, when a uh, cardiac stress tester uh, gets an error code or when it aborts the test, it will lower the elevation so, and it will come to a stop. And that way there the patient can exit safely and the machine can be serviced or uh, a different test selected. So um, she said no, it had a perfectly clear ECG. I'm like, okay. So the patient was heavy and you know, they said that it was having a hard time getting the patient's heart rate up. Okay, so uh, that tells me one other specific thing about this device. So it is a mid-mark unit. Um, and one of the things that most treadmills need is on periodic maintenance, the belt has to be lubricated. There's a hard board underneath the belt and that hard board uh, needs to slip and slide nice and easily with the belt. Now, a lot of people have commented on my other videos that the GE units do not need to be lubricated. I still disagree because I've seen where the hardboard actually gets wear and tear. Uh, so a uh, regular cleaning and lubrication, I would say, still is uh, a factor. However, um, this unit here being a mid-mark, it's got an interesting belt. And one of the first things I've seen when I came in is see that line right here? That's interesting, a cool feature. Um, although it, it develops an irregular wear pattern, what it is is there is a V-groove embedded on the bottom of this belt. And that V-groove, uh, it's a V that is on the bottom of the belt. It rides in a groove on the rollers here and here. Now what that does is that maintains tracking. So it is always 100% tracked between this roller and this roller because right here, there is an embedded V-groove. Now, a lot of treadmills, I would venture to say almost all other treadmills do not have that feature, and they have just a belt that just goes back and forth, and you can adjust the tracking either up here or down here at this end. There's usually one screw either on this side or down here at this side, and you tighten it or loosen it to adjust the parallel of the two rollers, and that will adjust the tracking of the belt. Well, this, this version right here because it's got the V-groove, it's gonna track itself automatically. Plus, if you have a patient that has an irregular gait, so they're walking maybe favoring one leg, the belt tends to wanna to walk to the side. So with this design, it won't have that problem. However, this unit is old, and you can tell it, it needs love, which is why I'm here, right? We love equipment. But the belt hasn't been lubricated in a very long time, and I checked, you know, you can set 
a tool down in here like a flat blade screwdriver and gently pry up and with a flashlight peer underneath the belt and take a look at the deck. The deck on this one was extremely dry and the bottom of the belt was extremely dry so I lubricated the belt. I have a very nice silicone that I use for that and um, then I checked the tracking while it was running and it was doing good. But now I have to turn my attention up here. So the hood on the mid-mark comes off. There's two fasteners, one right there, one right there. Those two fasteners come off and the whole deck lifts up as long as you move the grommets up. And I just kind of have it dangling there. And because of just leverage, it's pinching and it's holding itself up. Very convenient. Look down here though. This is where this device gets really cool. So there you have a uh, power control board, yes. You have a transformer uh, or an EMI filter. That one's an EMI filter. Um, right here, what is this guy? MTE 8 amp one phase rectifier. Okay, so right here is where we are going to do our, uh, yep, that's a transformer and rectifier. So that's where we're going to get some uh, high voltage DC Look at this. They have a variable frequency drive sitting down here in, in the deck. And obviously it needs some love. Variable frequency drives, what they do is they normally take uh, AC in, they rectify it, and then they pulse uh, three-phase DC. So you get three-phase DC out to a three-phase motor, and that's how you speed control. So this guy here would have some sort of serial communications to the PC and the PC would basically just send instructions to the VFD which tells it to um, you know speed up and slow down very very cool method and this is a part that you can almost definitely buy pretty much anywhere so this guy right here is basically a power control board and relay board which it would turn the relays on and off to adjust elevation so we have an elevation motor in there and it would also hmm it might tell this guy to activate the variable frequency drive, but I would assume the variable frequency drive is being told to turn on by a serial comm with the computer. So it's a cool machine. It's an older design. Uh, I like it. I dig it. A lot of these components will probably last almost forever. I mean, you can tell it needs some love, needs some cleaning, which is what I'm going to do right now. And um, man, would this be in a three phase motor? That means that it's also going to last a very long time. Very industrial design because a lot of consumer designs will use brushed DC motors. But uh, yeah, it just needs to be kept clean. Right here's my elevation motor. And uh, also that VFD could be working too hard. And there's also usually a current limiter on there. So if this deck has not been lubricated appropriately and you have a heavier patient on there, then this guy here is going to throw an error code back to the computer that says, hey, um, I'm on overcurrent protection and it will lower the elevation motor right there and it will stop your three phase motor and um, then it goes down into the resting position like this where the patient can get off. So that's a anatomy of a failure of what I think is going on. So it, it really is just a uh, lack of maintenance on this particular cardiac stress monitor. Um, it's the thing about cardiac stress monitors is that they usually don't get the love that they want and a modern day PM program for many hospitals means that um, a lot of these are just lick and stick PMs unfortunately but as you can tell it's a 220 volt treadmill and that uh, variable frequency drive right there it needs some love I mean it has to cool itself right uh, I've got a rectifier right there that needs to cool itself power control board down there you have to make sure it stays clean because there's a lot of components down there that also you know have to stay nice and cool so and the belt has to be lubricated so also the e-stop you got to check that e-stop man I've, I've seen where e-stops do not work the ECG leads if they're defective your ECG leads are also a, a common problem with these machines because if you're trying to run a test and you have an irregular ECG signal well it's going to error out and you're going to send a technician in like me to be here to show the machine some sort of love when it could be just regular ECG cable. So I'm going to show this machine some love get it back up and going and, uh, you know, get these guys back in business. Thanks for watching guys.